initially we wanted a bit of land to have our own garden. So it kind of like made more sense a ruin, but ruins are really expensive at the moment in this area. So this is what you were looking for, right? Uh, not, not this big. Even more ruin. We were looking more like a, just like walls so that we could actually build a house, do something that is a bit more modern. But if you have these, you need to keep all the walls, everything. You can change anything. Back then, there used to be four or five families living in, in a house like this. This used to be farming and everything, so up to 30 people could live in, in a house like this. And what do these sell for? Like, well, this is big. But to buy a ruin, like a, a standard, just if you wanted to buy that kind of a piece like that, that's... It is very expensive. Yeah. Plus the cost of having to bring water there. Usually try to do a well, but good luck with that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm from Barcelona. But as a teenager, I ride bikes and so I used to come and ride in this area. So it, this area was in the back of my head like, wow, this is super beautiful, no? So I saw the, the, the ad and it's like, I came here, I saw it and it's like, oh, okay, we need, to, you know, we need to get it. Yeah, so yeah. it was just an empty plot of land. Yeah, I mean, yeah we had to basically do everything. We had access to water and electricity, like town water, but we had to bring it to the home and, and then was the process of researching a little bit in terms of materials and stuff. Because we, we had an idea, but no experience. <laughs> yeah. So you started in this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we lived in the, in the caravan because I was really keen to live on the property. So we lived in it for about eight months. Our friends thought we were crazy because we moved in <laughs> I think in February and it was really cold. Really it cold. was really cold. It has heating and everything, but still like minus five, minus eight outside. Yeah. So, um, so you had to bring in the electric to your property. So you had electric and water. Is that what you were saying? So it only came like Yeah, the like to the entrance of the pot. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah. just up to the street. So that meant you had to dig? Trench, yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah. Initially we started by hand and that was a terrible idea. <laughs> It took quite a lot of effort. Yeah, yeah. I spent, because we did, the first thing we did actually was this little thing here, the greenhouse. Yeah, <laughs> and, and our, our neighbors were like, I don't understand, they're putting a greenhouse before they do the house? So the neighbors were really surprised. I had a microgreen business, so I, and I wanted to do like a market garden farm and everything like that. What are you growing? Lettuce, a few different types of kale, silver beet, beetroot, we've got some faba beans, we've got broccoli. Now I'm just preparing for spring, so. Yeah. So you, you put this up, the two of you? Yeah. So you just bought a kit and then... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's actually harder than you think. <laughs> Is it really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just because of the type, because it actually goes into the ground and everything like that. So okay. we had to dig, we dug a trench around and put it in. Because and... it's a 40 by half a meter trench. And this is pure clay. You were using a tool like the one you had to do, right? Uh, that one actually, yeah, yeah. Broke a few, a yeah, few yeah, ones, like but this. yeah, this one. <laughs> so your house, then you decided not to dig a lot. I mean, wh why did you make that choice that it's elevated? The main idea behind the house is to have as little of an impact as possible. So there's no concrete or anything on the foundation. It's called Micropilot. And it's basically like a big screw. It's like a massive screw and they come with a machine that is not that big. They literally drill it in. And that's the, the head of where you can actually put the house on top. It's at the foundation, but with any excavation or anything. So we actually didn't touch the soil. So we could actually take the house and the ground would be actually as it was. On the foundation is the, the metal, um, which is not that big. Yeah. It goes down between two and four meters, depends on the... So this method, it can be done on any terrain because if you have rocks, it's a bit tricky. In this case, because it's clay, it's structurally viable to actually drill it and it's going to be stable. It's not going to move. And so we're seeing, is that a water block? Yeah, that's yeah. the water tank. So we get all the rainwater from the house. So all the gutters from the roof, four of them, and they all go down under the house and then poof. Yeah. Because the problem we have here is that it, it doesn't rain a lot. 
but when it does, it's, you know, like heavy rain. So you want to get as much water as possible. So how much is this? <laughs> so this is 30,000 liters. It, it, this is not what we we're used to seeing when we see the big barrels. Like you decided to do a kind of a bladder under the house. We right? did a bladder because it was a much cheaper option. Oh. Yeah, so it was significantly cheaper. So once you had the screw piles down, what was the next step? So yeah, the next step was the semi prefab base. So this is a sandwich, like 30 centimeters of insulation. And this comes as a, like as a sandwich already. So they came here and literally... In a hours, day or...? Yeah, like a, in a day, they had all the base of the house done. And then the frame of the house. And then the kind of like the exciting part, which is the hemp. So on the outside here, do we see a material that's significant or what are you yeah, using? Yeah, this is a, a limestone. Mm. So um, this is like a limestone layer, about one centimeter, or a little bit, a yes. little bit more than one centimeter. And so we didn't actually paint it. We, we just um, sealed it with a sealant. Wow. That's the limestone. So it's a render on top of the hem wall. Okay. Is that what we're seeing over here? Is that lime or hemp? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's hemp. Yeah, that's hemp. yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> So this is where we actually did the mix. And that's the waste <laughs> that was left. Yeah, so this is actually the, the stock of the, of the hemp plant. Oh. They let it dry for a few weeks and then you do the mix with lime and water. That's the only waste from the walls. That's all the waste. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Not, not much. Wow. But wow. literally when we were putting the hemp in the walls, if a bit of hemp fell on the floor, it didn't matter. You just pick it up and mix it. The Put it back on the, the next yeah. Day. Dry it out a bit and then mix yeah. it again. I mean, because it's not the concrete and stuff, like it's pretty nice to work with. It doesn't smell, it's not like you're not using any chemicals or anything. So it's just like lime, hemp and water, basically. It's just so few ingredients, you yeah. know exactly what you're working yeah, yeah. with, right? If you want to build a house, it's like a great way for a person that doesn't have any skills. Yeah, because the materials are extremely cheap, like very, 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 very cheap. Hemp is super cheap, water obviously it's from the plot, and lime is very cheap. What is expensive? It's labour. So if you have one or two guys that, that have experience, like previous experience with it, and then you get friends or like family to help with the actual building of the house, it's a pretty easy process and much cheaper than any other house. The whole process is you create the timber structure. We did the roof before because we started doing it like in spring, which is rain season here. So we decided to put the roof before actually doing the walls, which there's a saying that you should not start the house by the roof, but yeah. <laughs> but that was just really important because if you're building the hempcrete walls, then if it rains a lot, it can get too much moisture. So we did the whole hem thing in two months, two months maybe, but it dries pretty quickly. So the whole process, we had the structure, we had the roof, and then you do um, formwork, kind of like a mold out of wood, like what would you do with concrete? And then you start stamping the hem. Hem mortar, so it's basically water, the pieces of hem, and then limestone. They used to use a lot of hem in France and Spain for a while. We lost track of it. Like a lot of people don't even know what hemp is, you know, like they see it as like, oh, marijuana. It's like, well, it's actually not. It's been used for ages for many things. And yeah, now we, there's a bit of a movement to try to recover that tradition a little bit. Obviously, like we started on this side of the house and, and the few, the few, layers that we did here 
you could see that he wasn't, you know, like super regular and stuff. Oh, really? Well, because we were all learning. You don't see that anymore, do you? No, no, because no, now it, it's been covered with the render. Should we go inside? Yeah. And this is a bit unfinished, this room, but yeah, slowly getting there. Yeah. It's a bike garage for now. Yeah, the moment is, yeah. <laughs> exactly. So you decided to do one kind of great room then? <laughs> Definitely. Um, that was key for us to also have the kitchen. Neil loves to cook, so to have the kitchen, big island bench. And... So we wanted to leave at least one wall, you know, like raw, so that you could see like, how it was made. So this top layer, this is the hemp. And then it has the lime. Exactly, and then you can see that it's like a centimeter or so yeah. of the render on top of the hem. And you can see here that it's done in rows, so you do about 60 centimeters, yeah. and you go around the whole house, and then you do another level, and then another level. So, so the whole idea with it is that this walls are 30 centimeters wide. The whole wall is insulation, so you feel now the warmth in the oh, house. Oh, it's so warm in here. Yeah, but yeah. Heating. No heating. No, 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 no heating. No. It's really cold outside and this is so feels outside, great. Just check. It's four degrees centigrade at, at, like outside and now it's 21 inside. Yeah. yeah. The whole principle, the house is designed, so it's south facing. South facing means that we get all the sun. So we get sun from very early in the morning. Now obviously being winter a bit less, but like basically that's where east is and then all the south and then to the west where the sun is setting at the moment. So if it's a very sunny day, the sun hits the house and it's designed so the angle of the roof lets all the light into the house. And then we have thermal mass on the floor, which retains the heat during the day. And then at night it releases heat. In summer though, because the sun is more vertical, the sun doesn't even reach the, the outside of the wall. Because you have so much overhang? We have a bit of over, like, so yeah, it's been designed, like calculated with this in mind. So would you consider this a passive house in a sense? It's I not mean... um, strictly a passive house because basically hemp breathes. So one reason that we really like the idea of hemp and limestone is because the humidity inside will actually go through the wall and outside. So it's not it's not a sealed house. No. Someone might think that this is similar to a passive house, but it's actually not. It's the opposite. So a passive house, the whole concept is to seal it as much as possible so you can control airflow and temperature and everything. This is very well insulated, but it lets moisture and air through. So it re helps regulate the... So when it's drier inside than outside, it's going to obviously bring more moisture in and the other way around. When so it's... that's how organisms work. Yeah, right. like a skin, yeah. Yeah. It's like a skin. Yeah. So now you see the, the eaves here that predict this in the summer, right? Mm -hmm. In summer it goes like, so it, the sun, that's where it finishes. Um, and then in winter it goes all the way to the other side of the house. Okay, because this is the south side. Yeah. You have so much land, why not find the south? Yeah. When looking at, at pieces of land, it was just south. Yeah, like we have friends that have a house over there and they don't get any sun in winter. Oh, on that side of the mountain? Yeah. yeah. We can go back in. I know it's getting cold. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to not shiver. <laughs> oh, yeah, I mean, it's incredible how much warmer it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, I love it. Because we're in Spain, so it's very sunny. But we had a week of rain and, and not much sun. And that's why we have the fireplace to help, you know, like boost a little bit. Um, but because it's so well insulated, like you just put the fireplace at night for an hour or so, and the temperature rises two, three degrees. The main thing with hemp, so it's so well insulated because you have air pockets in it. Basically, so this is the hem. Okay. Um, we had these homemade big hammers of wood yeah. Yeah. to help pack it down a little bit. And the key is how much do you pack it or not. 
It's because you want to have a certain amount of air in the walls. So you have the wall here and then on each side you pack it and but in the middle you don't pack it, you just pack it down lightly with your hand. And that way the middle of the wall has a lot more air in it. And then what you also do after the 60 centimetre section, you build the hemp like this. So then when you go for the next layer, it's not going on a flat wall. So then there's a little bit of space. If there's a slight gap, which should not, but like, let's say that there's a bit of a gap. Like for example um, here. We don't have a thermal bridge, yeah. Maybe there's oh, a slight gap there, but it's actually not a gap because we've got inside the wall, it's going up. So it's not like a whole gap going through there. Because it's not a straight surface. Yeah. No. Yeah. The nice thing about building like this, because there's other methods using hem bricks instead of hem crit. Obviously, you're going to have a gap between bricks. That's called a thermal bridge. With this, it's a continuous wall. Also, we like more minimal square finish, but like you could create any shape that you want. Yeah, um, well, a lot yeah. of people, they have the corners. We didn't do it, but a lot of people have the corners more round okay. and things like that. We wanted a house that looks more like a standard house yeah. and still is natural, yeah. like this is all natural. But if someone doesn't want a house that looks really hippie, it's mm -hmm. a great option because you can get a much cleaner finish compared to a straw bale house. Because oh. I think straw bale house, it's harder to get these walls that are super slab and everything like that. So before we go into the bedroom, yeah. I think one key design feature that we really wanted to have or, or not have is corridors in the house because I feel like that's a lot of wasted space. So you can see it's only, well, we're taking two meters up in our house for a, for a corridor. So that was super important to avoid that. Mm -hmm. You can come into the bedroom. Okay. We tried to figure out a size where, okay, if we want to change this and you want to have a desk in it, it's big enough to have a desk and a double bed. You might see that there's power points on the oh, wow. wall. Up high. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the idea is that if we ever want to have a bed up high and then say with kids or something like that, and then um, more of a play yeah. area. All the rooms are more or less designed generous, at least from me coming from Barcelona, where flats or where I grew up, flat was more generous enough that you can have like a double bed and maybe a desk so you can move around. Exactly. Yeah. So that mountain there is Mare de Déu del Món, the highest mountain around. And because for me it's very special because I ride, I ride bikes and, and I, as a teenager, I used to go there all the time, all the time, all the time. And now I get to sleep seeing the, <laughs> seeing the mountain. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This is basically very similar to the other room. It's actually, it feels a lot smaller. Um, but it's only 10 centimetres smaller. So just because of the roof of the height, it's um, got a completely different feeling compared to the other room. Oh, right. So it's much cosier. Hearing the colour is almost all that sort of beige hemp colour, right, all around? Yeah, because you've got two walls of hemp yeah. um, here, so. Which is a yeah. different feeling, actually. Yeah. yeah, like I couldn't imagine the house without having these walls. If all the walls were white, I quite like it because it's not perfect. No, it's mm -hmm. it's more natural and. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the ba bathroom, <laughs> you won't see a wi uh, mirror. Neil really wanted to have a window so you look out when you're brushing your teeth. So yes, and then another feature, of, well, another important thing, we wanted to have a compost toilet. Oh, does it so look like anything different? It's a split. Oh, it compost toilet so the pee goes in the front and then number two goes in the, the big hole. The idea is there's worms so then you don't have to empty it as regularly. It's a bit difficult to find the compost toilet that looks like a normal toilet so we really wanted to try. Just because water is such an issue yeah. here so it seems so crazy yeah, having exactly. drinking water going to the toilet so that was a big we and it, it does have a flush but oh. So it does have a flush for the flushing. Well, so for the we, you you could, yeah. But that that amount of water is much less water compared to a standard. 
we definitely wanted a toilet that looked like a normal one. Yeah. Because if you have friends or family that they're not, they're not used to, used it. to it, that it's not like a whole thing. And Is there some training you do? There, like, there is a bit I, of yeah, training. We, we have a yeah. Little, uh, <laughs> So always sitting down for guys as well. The toilet paper goes into the actual compost. That's fine. Yeah. yeah. Then a bit of straw. This is an actual. This is a mix that we use. It's not necessary to do it all the time, but it's a mix that helps regulate the pH and helps the worm. And then lid down. Obviously, you don't want any air, extra air, or like other bugs getting into it. But it's it's pretty basic stuff. So we have a deposit under the house, and we're lucky that the house is slightly raised, so it was relatively easy to install. And it's a cubic meter more or less, so not too big. And we were a bit surprised because the guy that supplied this, he was like, look for a family of four with the right amount of worms. You don't need MTDs. Like every every two years. Every two years. The other thing is like, it doesn't smell at all. It doesn't um, smell at all. I no. put my nose in there. So <laughs> <laughs> what you need to make sure is that you have a balance of humid or dry CBT so the, the worms actually thrive. And that's also why we split we and po because when you mix it is when you start having some issues but so you only use a little bit of straw and what's very different to this compared to usual compost toilets is that they use sawdust you know when you use a lot of sawdust it bulks it up a lot so then you need a bigger deposit yeah how often are you throwing in straw not too not often. much yes. and just after number two and honestly it's, it's enough using just a slight amount yeah. okay and how many worms approximately? What are we talking about for Ooh, worm colony? Down hundreds here? and hundreds. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of yeah. worms. You, you, you need a lot more. Yeah. This is our favorite, favorite part of the house. With the kitchen, we really wanted the island bench. We've obviously got induction, and because we've got solar panels, so, and obviously because we wanted this in the island bench we can't have an extractor above because it's just too high. So this works really well because it's got the extractor inbuilt. You said a suction? Yep. So when you start cooking, the, you see the flow of the air going down. Yep. There's a filter of carbon and it just like lets the air out. You know, if the soil's depleted and everything like that, so this is obvious a generous house is not a tiny house by any means, but um, we wanted to, you know, like be comfortable enough, but like not live in a 300 square meter house. Like <laughs> <laughs> Building it from scratch was for us a good option to create a house that it was like our house and, and having like a, you know, like a, a comfortable house to live in. 